Good morning everybody. Today we are going to be talking about the very difficult third hole at Wolf Creek. Uh, this hole is made difficult by the fact that there is 19 to 20 yards of elevation, 60 foot rise in elevation. Greens that are elevated tend to skid the ball forward. Uh, the shots do not stop very quickly, especially with a cheaper ball. If you have a more expensive ball, it's going to be easier to land the ball on the green and stop it faster. But with the cheaper ball, it's going to skid across the green. And what I'm going to demonstrate to you now is how variations in spin affect how the ball behaves once it hits the green. So for the first shot, we're going to use no spin modification. And we are going to use, we're going to play this hole at about 193 yards, minus the wind, we're going to play at about 190, because the wind is a tailwind. So, we're, going to, we're not going to touch the spin indicator, we're going to play at about 95% power. And what should happen here is the ball is going to skid across the green and land and stop in the rough at the back. This happened because we did not modify the spin indicator on the ball, on the shot that we were playing. So that demonstrates how a ball behaves once it hits an elevated green with a cheap ball. We're going to try again. We're going to go 5 iron, we're going to do 95% power again. This time we're going to reduce the spin as much as possible. And we're going to expect a very similar result. The ball is going to fly low. It's not going to be elevated. And it's going to kick the green and run off the back of the green. 95% power. You see how low that ball kept? It shoots off the green and into the rough. And you're left with a 13 yard pitch that you need to try and save par with. What we're trying to do now is demonstrate the last method, which is the method you should be using. Maximum backspin. We want the ball to grip and plug as soon as possible once it hits the green. And we're going to use about 95% power. Now you see the ball is elevating, it's got a lot more loft, and it should still stop on the green. Notice how quickly that ball stopped compared to the other two shots I just showed you. And we left with a 15 foot putt for birdie, which can be made. It must be noted that the only reason we have this birdie opportunity is by playing the correct shot of the tee box. Maximum backspin and get the ball to stop as quickly as possible. Alright, so now we are left with a putt that is breaking left to right. Fast speed green. Breaking left to right, left to right, left to right. Each dot indicates a left to right break, meaning we need to aim outside the left edge and let the ball feed back towards the hole just there that ball that dot seems to be moving from right to left from the player's perspective all of these dots are going left to right from this perspective as you can see left to right left to right left to right left to right for sure left to right left to right left to right and left to right but from the reverse angle left to right left to right left to right this one right to left right to left no yeah left to right these ones aren't doing much all right so what we can do is try and hit the ball and see 
if we can get the ball to curve back into the hole. It's going to miss outside right here. Because I missed the ding, the shot did not start exactly where we aimed. Take a mulligan. Try it again. Aim left over here. Give it a bit more steam this time. Hit the ding. And that is missed. Despite the fact that I aimed over here, the ball seemed to immediately go to the right. So we're going to take the gimme, walk away with the par. As you can see, with enough practice, you could make a birdie on that hole. Should not be a problem. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.